Chillin' paying birds like I don't even see it. <laughs> you feel me? Bob Ross, you will never see me trippin'. Got the vision, I don't even need assistance. Bob Ross, all I do is chill. Good evening, folks. My life is a thrill. What's up? Real, SLU. JMP, what's going on? What's up, Alex? What's up, Jeremy? Good morning. God bless. Florida J, what's going on? It is what it is. I'm on a hoverboard, folks. Yo, Tre Treka. Treka said he wanted to chat soon. Treka, if you, uh, I, did, I, I didn't have this plan, but if you want to give me an invite, Treka, we could chat about what's going on in Syria and stuff. You want to do that, brother? So it was going to be coffee on a hoverboard, but I might bring in my friend from Syria and we might have a chat about what's going on. Inter, inter national stuff going on here. Because, you know, I'm not trying to flex on them, but I do have a hoverboard. But we got more pressing issues at, at hand. Let's see. Let me see if my boy's here. All right. Yep. I'm going to bring it. Hold on. It just got serious in here. I'm going to bring in my boy Trekker from Syria, and we're going to chat about what's going on. See, that's how it really gets. I, I try to just get a hoverboard coffee session, and it, get, it gets into something this serious. All right. He should be coming in in a few seconds. Did it work? Let me see. Send invite. Oh, we'll see if it works. Maybe he doesn't have internet connection, so we'll just chat for now. What's up, AK? What we got? Let's see. All right, for now, until until Trekka's guest here, maybe he can't. Someone says, still selling the pink eye bless hat. Yeah, they're, they're going to be around for like a week, maybe less than a week, so you got to get it. Okay. Yo, what's up, my brother? What's going on? How are you? I'm good, my brother. How are you? Man, life is good. Somebody, I, I can see it now because we do look similar. Someone accused me of pretending to be you, like I had like an alternate persona to pretend like I was from Syria. So we're breaking, we're breaking it out. <laughs> we are two separate people. Yeah, yeah. yeah I used so to good. get that a lot. Yes, yeah, I mean, listen, it's a good compliment to get advice. No, I'm just kidding. But uh. Jokes aside, yeah, what's going on? I know, I know you hit me up the other day and said you wanted to talk about what's what's going on in Syria, like different between when Trump was in to when Biden was in. Well, as you know, this week, uh, Joe Biden uh, bombed Syria. It's uh, really crazy that the, the guy has only been in power for one month and he's already bombing the Middle East. And, uh, you know, like me as a Syrian, I was not surprised because uh, we, the Syrians, we knew that uh, when Joe Biden becomes president, he's going to continue the same exact foreign policy that Obama started here in Syria. Because as you know, and uh, most of your followers know, that uh, this whole war in Syria in 2011, it started after, you know, Obama started funding ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda and sending them money and weapons. So now that Joe Biden became president, you, as you can see, he immediately started bombing Syria. And now they're continuing with the propaganda and you know the deep state is back yeah without i don't I'm, obviously i don't want to like give away location and stuff but uh you're first people who don't know you live in syria right you're from syria yeah i live in syria in damascus city in the capital yeah, and uh i guess you know we all kind of saw this coming because with trump um what you were saying with the funding terrorists i looked up when trump was in i know this was like mainstream news out here he cut billions of dollars of funding to rebel groups. And that's how, yeah. you know, they're branded to us with McCain and Obama in our media. It, I mean, I would say it probably spans CNN and Fox for the most part, but they say these are rebel groups. And um, I know Tulsi Gabbard went on Jake Tapper CNN and she said, who are these rebel groups? Everybody I talked to in Syria says they have no idea who they are. They're, you know, all these weapons and stuff end up getting in the hands either directly or indirectly to Al Qaeda, Al Nusra. So, what do you think about what Tulsi said? Like, what, who are these rebel groups that they tell us that they were funding, you know, during the Obama and I think into Trump? You know, uh, it's funny because uh, in the Obama days, when they were sending money and weapons to uh, these groups, they were telling the American people that, oh, my God, we are sending these uh, weapons and money to moderate rebels and freedom fighters and so on. When in reality, these uh, groups were ISIS and Al-Qaeda. And they were beheading Syrians, they were killing Christians, they were killing 
everybody, they were destroying all churches and so on. And the mainstream media, of course, was completely silent about this because the American government's goal was to overthrow the Syrian government. So they didn't care who they are funding. You know, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, like they say. So they were funding ISIS and they were funding Al-Qaeda and they were lying to the American people, telling them, oh my God, these people, they're very open-minded people. They listen to the Beatles and they listen to Pink Floyd and, you know, freedom fighters. Yeah, so from, from my perspective, because obviously I'm here and I can't see it on the ground, that's an explosive mm -hmm. claim you're making, but I know Tulsi Gabbard pretty much said the same thing on CNN and, and our media was shocked, where mm -hmm. even on face value what they say, you know, they say, you know, the, the rebel groups were fighting Bashir al-Assad and then you have, uh, and Syria, the Syrian government, and then you have the Syrian government, you know, fighting ISIS and stuff. So it's like, at best, from what they were claiming, it's like a triangle effect of, uh, you know, just like you're fighting someone, like you said, the enemy of my enemy is a friend. It's like creating such a mess. And during Obama, uh, you know, a lot of Syria was under occupation. I think this was one of the crazy, I'm gonna get off the hoverboard now, it's getting real. But, um, you know, during Trump's administration, when he cut funding to rebel groups, I know he cut like billions of dollars and it was mainstream news. All of a sudden, ISIS and, and these <clears throat> terrorists seemed to be losing traction and i think within a year or two like they were pretty much only i believe in idlib right the, the province in idlib yeah. and not all over the place like in damascus and that seemed like a huge accomplishment to populists in america left and right everybody wanted to end the war and at least scale back and he did that and it's like the media never gave him credit for it and you know i th i thought and i reported on a lot i was like i think it had to do with the billions of dollars to cut funding because if you cut the funding whether they're purposely doing it or not, it seems like, you know, there's so many groups on the ground. It's not a one versus one war. It's like all these different groups involved. So you, 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 it starts getting sloppy. And I, there's a great video that I, I bring up sometimes of Hillary Clinton. It's, it's crazy. She actually really told the truth. I think it's one of her best videos where she was talking about how the start of some of the terrorist groups, I think it was like Mujahideen and stuff was, you know, America funding them to fight Russia. And then as soon as it was over, all these terrorist groups have all the weapons that were given to them by the United States. And, and Hillary Clinton admitted this on camera. And she was like, we didn't mean for this to happen, but you know, we got our objective. And then when our objective is done, you know, that's what happens. So, so what do you think is, is it a similar thing there where, you know, maybe they were fighting Russia and Iran through Syria and just didn't really care who, who was doing it. Well, look, because see the problem with the, <clears throat> with America is this, that, um, they, they want to overthrow the Syrian government so desperately. So they saw that the majority of the Syrian people are supporting the government. So the only way they can do this is to support uh, the groups like ISIS and Al-Qaeda, extremist Wahhabi terrorist groups that are against a secular government, that are against minorities, that would want to implement their own ideology by force. And even if their life is in danger and they're going to die, they wouldn't mind because to an ISIS or, a, or an Al-Qaeda fighter, if he dies today, He's, it's a win-win situation because he's going to go to heaven to his 72 hairy virgins and, you know, live the life in heaven. So to them, they were like, these are the perfect people for us to fund and finance. And that is what they were doing. So, of course, if they're going to tell the American people that we are financing uh, ISIS and Al-Qaeda and the same people that were celebrating when the Twin Towers uh, went down, the American people, will, all of them will be against it. So they have to lie and say, no, we are funding moderate troubles, we're funding freedom fighters and so on, you know? So how, when you think of it, how can somebody be a moderate while he's holding weapons and killing people and raping and all of this stuff? But uh, unfortunately, the mainstream media has been lying so much to the American people. And uh, I thank people like you that have been telling the truth and you know, fighting uh, the, the system. So uh, me as a Syrian, I really appreciate your work. Yeah, I want to ask you with Trump, why do you think he cut that back? Because he's been even here a paradox where it's like on some hands, uh, he's been one of the realest people we've ever seen. And on, on, mm -hmm. the, on the other hand, he seems like the same old, same old. Sometimes he's like blowing my mind with how freedom first he is. And then other times he isn't where I think, you know, on, on paper, Trump seemed like the most pro- uh, Israel anti-Iran president we've had, very tough on Iran, very supportive of Israel. Why do you think Trump was uh, able to like, uh, I guess, I don't know if he completely did the right thing in your perspective, but have a like more, I guess, less bullish, it seems like less bullish, like militarily on Iran and, uh, you know, 
that, that situation in Syria. Mm -hmm. Well, look, see, now everyone in the Middle East right now, especially like in Syria, we're all worried because we know that Joe Biden is a bigger danger to our country than Trump was. Now, like you said, when Trump became president in the first couple of months, he cut the program, the CIA program that was funding and financing the jihadists. That is 100% true. And there is something, the second thing that uh, Trump wanted to do that I really was supporting was pull out all the troops from uh, Syria. But unfortunately, he came out and he said he wants to pull out the American troops from Syria twice and when he did that, the mainstream media and people from the Republican side and also people from the Democratic side came out and they started criticizing him and telling him, are you mad? You want to pull out the troops? That is crazy. And everyone just started attacking him. Uh, and that made him change his mind. So uh, those were the two things that he did that I uh, uh, appreciated. But he also... Uh, at the end of the day, he, he didn't pull the troops, that's a fact. And uh, there, there were a lot of American troops in Syria that were stealing the oil. And that's also a fact, my brother. So um, he admit, he's he definitely... That. He, and that yeah. was kind of, I mean, obviously, you know, refreshing in a way. I'm not happy he did that to you or in general or to your country. But it's like, usually they lie about it, where he went on TV and was like, I'm going to take the oil, where it was like, wow, he literally, like, you would never hear, like, Bush or Obama admit that, where he just was like, yeah, I'm taking it. So he even said, he said that to the television that he he was, like, stealing yeah. the oil or taking it. Yeah, even though it's wrong, at least, like, the he is honest, you know, like, with Joe Biden or Obama, they will lie about it. They'll be like, uh, no, we are we're in Syria because we care about the Syrian people and we want to protect the Syrian people. When in reality, they don't give a F about the Syrian people. They don't care about people in the Middle East in general, because... Look for an example, Yemen. Saudi Arabia has been killing the people of Yemen for how many years now? And the American government is silent about it. In fact, like the American government is selling Saudi Arabia weapons to kill the people of Yemen. So whenever you see that uh, the American government is saying we want to interfere in the Middle East because we care about the people, it's a lie. One of the biggest proof is America currently is still imposing harsh and cruel economic sanctions on the Syrian people. And... Uh, uh, these sanctions are hurting the Syrian people a lot. It's not uh, hurting the Syrian government. For an example, when you talk to the people in the American government and you tell them, you guys have to lift these economic sanctions of Syria, they'll, tell, they'll tell you, no, we are putting these economic sanctions to hurt the Syrian government, to punish the Syrian government. When in reality, the, the reality is, is the opposite. The only people that are getting hurt from these economic sanctions are the Syrian people. It's the Syrian people that are sitting every day without electricity, without fuel, without bread, without, you know. You do think high-ranking uh, politicians in Syria right now are, are sitting in their mansions without electricity? They have a lot of money to buy a generator and, you know. So yeah. these economic sanctions are very cruel and... Uh, the, we have to speak up and tell the American government that you have to pull out from uh, the Middle East, just like uh, Donald Trump pulled out from Stormy, Stormy Daniels. Uh, we have to <laughs> lift the economic sanctions uh, because it's really hurting the people. Yeah, uh, on that note, I have a, a different question. But first, because how it's pissed to us, like obviously during Obama, you had this is just mainstream, like, you know, ISIS had a, a large control of Syria. And then Trump gets mm -hmm. in and they kind of, uh, you know, lose a lot of ground and, and Trump takes credit for it because I think he deserves it. Not complete. I know there's other countries involved, but he did pull back uh, funding. But then he kind of pitches it to us and like say Fox News, One American News Network, pretty much all right wing influencers will say, uh, give Trump credit for the, uh, sa the sanctions because he, like, he's not starting a war with Iran. He's putting sanctions on him. He's not starting war with Syria. He's putting sanctions on him. So I just want you to repeat that again because this is just a perspective that I don't think yeah. uh, left-wing news is clearly not talking about very often. But, so, I mean, maybe they do. I guess that's the weird thing. When the right does something, it's like they're always fighting. But, um, you know, most right-wing people think it's good that he sanctions these countries because it's, you know, it's fighting their government without actually starting war. Yeah, like Trump, Donald Trump, it's a fact. Donald Trump is the only American president that didn't start any new wars. You know, he's the only president that didn't start any new wars. He did stop the funding of ISIS and so on, but uh, uh, he didn't pull out the troops from Syria like he promised. And uh, the situation really did improve uh, when uh, Trump was uh, president. Uh, that's also because of uh, his decision to stop funding ISIS and also the help of Russia 
on the Syrian army in fighting ISIS. Because right now, the only city that is still under the control of the jihadist terrorists is called Idlib. So if you want to look for Idlib on a map, it's very small. It's a very small city. It's smaller than a penguin's anus. But that is the last city that is still under the control of ISIS. So hopefully it's only a matter of time until the Syrian army is able to liberate it uh, completely. But, you know, if Joe Biden is going to bring back the same foreign policies that Obama started and he started refunding uh, ISIS and sending them weapons and so on, I fear that the situation is going to get very bad. I have a question because in America, it's almost, I would say, among the people of America from left wing to right wing at this point. I don't know about major polling, but I would guess a majority of people think there's something suspicious in the Middle East. I believe a majority of voters don't want to be in the Middle East. You know, the right wing, which was always more pro-war, I think, under Bush, has become actually more anti-war. And the left Democrats have become like the opposite of Trump. But there's still that progressive left who talks about Yemen, who talks about, uh, you know, what's going on in Syria. So there is most people are suspicious of what's going on in the Middle East. My question to you on the ground of uh, like what your perspective on why it is, because first, you know, obviously 9-11 was a huge launcher uh, to bring people in. And we were sold that we were going to go for bin Laden. And then we ended up in Libya and Syria and places that bin Laden just wasn't. Uh, and everybody started getting suspicious. And then you have a lot of documentaries out here. They say, well, it's for oil. You know, we're going for oil and money. And, you know, also there's the thought of like proxy wars where it's like, uh, is the U.S. government really mad at Syria? Maybe, maybe there's, you know, and I'm going to let you talk about it. But I know, you know, Russia's there, Iran's there. And most people in our government are always fighting Russia and China. That's happened in America for hundreds of years. Iran has, you know, been a, uh, a opponent of especially conservatives for at least a decade or so. So what my question to you is like, those are all the things that people speculate of why we're there to keep America safe and such, but almost everybody doesn't believe it and everyone's kind of searching for the truth. So what, why do you think America's there and why, and do you even being like reasonable, do you think there's any reason for anything that they're doing to help the people of America or do you think it's all just a lie? It's unfortunately all a lie because first of all, uh, Syria is not a threat to America, for America to say that we are in Syria to, to, for the America's national security. Second of all, the main reasons why America is doing this in Syria is a couple of reasons, okay? First of all, uh, Syria mm -hmm. is a country that is allies with Russia and Iran, who are countries that are enemies with America, okay? Uh, Syria, the Syrian government is enemies with Israel because, you know, Israel occupied one of our lands. It's called the Golan Heights. And Israel is an ally with uh, America. So uh, this is one of the main reasons why uh, America wants to overthrow the government because uh, the Syrian government is enemies with its ally, which is Israel, and friends with Iran and Israel. This is uh, Iran and uh, Russia, sorry. Second of all, because of the oil, there was a a oil pipeline deal that would move from, you know, Qatar to Syria, from Syria to Europe. And this was the deal that Amer the American government wanted to implement in Syria. And the Syrian government said, we don't want to implement this pipeline deal. We have another deal with Russia and Iran, and we're going to use this pipeline deal from uh, Russia, Iran to Europe. And of course, you know, the oil business is billions and billions and billions of money. So this is one of the second reasons why America is uh, in, in Syria. And second of all, now that uh, they started funding, they, so they tried at the beginning to fund ISIS and fund Al-Qaeda, hope, hoping that uh, they would be able to overthrow the Syrian government. And then America, as usual, will put a puppet president in Syria that would follow their orders. But they saw that the, this plan is not working and uh, the majority of the Syrian people are supporting the Syrian army and the Syrian government. So they were like, we have no other choice but to start attacking directly and being there directly. And that is what they are doing. But uh, these are one of the main reasons why America is here. If, you know, if let's say the Syrian government was uh, friends with Israel and wasn't friends with Iran, but you see, look, this is the problem. Like the Syrian people didn't want Russia to be in Syria. The Syrian people didn't want Iran or America or Turkey. But... Uh, from the beginning of the crisis, we were fighting more than one army, 
more than one army. We were fighting ISIS. We were fighting Al Qaeda. We were fighting Jabhat al Nusra. Then Turkey entered. Then America entered. Then you remember when America, UK, and France striked us. Then Israel striked us. So Syria couldn't fight alone. So it started asking their allies to come to Syria and help out in the fight. So she first asked Russia to come in. Then it started asking Iran to come in. So if America in the first place wasn't finding, funding ISIS and destroying Syria, Syria, Syria wouldn't have invited Iran or Russia in the first place. And let me just tell you, tell you guys something and tell your followers. I, I'm sure you know this, but it's important for your followers to know this. It's true Iran and Russia is in Syria. And if I had it my own way, I would uh, kick out every single foreign country in Syria. I, the only army that I want to be in my country is the Syrian army. But the difference between Russia and America's presence in Syria is that Russia is here legally. So the Syrian government officially invited the Russian government to come to Syria and help in the fight against ISIS and Al-Qaeda. Unlike America and Turkey, for an example, they weren't invited officially to come and help out in Syria. Their presence in Syria is illegal, and it has been proven that the American government and the Turkish go government were funding ISIS and funding Al-Qaeda. So this is one of also the main reasons why we, the Syrians, we don't want the American troops to be in Syria, because there is a trust issue. We don't really trust them anymore. Because... Syrians wouldn't look, oh, they have now a democratic president, oh, and they have now a republican. We don't look at it that way. It's, we look at it, okay, the American government did this, and we look at it that way. We don't look at it the way Americans look at their own government. So, yeah. So you're saying, yeah, uh, the reason that Iran and Russia even got there is because America and Turkey were there first intervening illegally. And Saudi Arabia and all of them. My question to you is because I, I don't even think this question gets asked because you have the left wing in our country. They just say Putin, Trump, Putin, Trump. And then, uh, you know, the, the, the right wing just like will support anything that Israel and Trump does against Iran and, you know, whatever, really. Uh, but mm. do you, what do you think Russia's motives are for going there? Because I know on, on paper, it's like, OK, America's there. We're going to help you. And Iran's like, we're going to help you. What do you think Russia and Iran's motives are? Because I'm sure in some ways, I'm sure they love helping you. And in other ways, I'm sure they have an objective for their own countries as of well. Of course, of course, of course, my friend. Listen, nothing in politics is for free. Don't think that Russia is helping Syria right now because they just love us and they, they are attracted to Assad's blue eyes. No, everything... <laughs> uh, you understand? They're doing this for something in return. You know, they would want to have their military bases to stay in Syria for a while. They, they, they're taking our MENA port and so on. So they're taking things in return. So nothing, they're not helping us for free. But uh, Russia and Iran has been a longtime ally of the Syrian government. You're talking of, they're, they've been allies for more than 50 years. So when the Syrian government wanted somebody to help them, they would, they asked allies and people they trust that they can't really ask for an example america or ask saudi arabia when they knew that these people were conspiring to destroy the country so this is of course they're not here because they love us or, or they, they are fans of my hairy legs they are here because they they're get, they getting something in return for sure my question to you is uh what 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 is saudi arabia's influence in all this do you think and uh is, does china play any role in the middle east at all or no well, Saudi Arabia is one of the creators of this Wahhabi ideology. They, these, this extremist Wahhabi ideology that ISIS and Al-Qaeda and Jabhat al-Nusra has, it came from Saudi Arabia. Like the Syrian people, we don't have this ideology, you understand? Like Syria is a secular country. Syria is a country that is very diverse. We have Christian Orthodox, Christian uh, Catholics, Druze, Alawis, people from other ethnicities like the Kurds, the Armenians. It's a very diverse country. We don't have this mentality in Syria. It came from Gulf countries, from people like Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia was, uh, you know, uh, brainwashing these people, putting this Wahhabi ideology in their brain and sending them to Syria. You know, you go kill, do jihad, uh, and if you die, you will go to heaven, to, you know, the, the, the hairy virgins and so on, and do suicide bombing, and you will be a hero in the eyes of God. So they were brainwashing these people and they were sending them to Syria, go and die, go and die. That's why we started finding a lot of ISIS and Al-Qaeda fighters that are not Syrians. We're finding them people from Libya, people from Afghanistan, people from Iraq, people from Canada, believe it or not, Canada. You had Canadian people that were joining ISIS uh, in Syria and fighting. Can you believe it? So we're not fighting a nationality. We're actually fighting an ideology. 
Mm-hmm. So this is the this is why uh, the the war in Syria is a very dangerous war because you're fighting an ideology. Do you think uh, did China play any role? I'm just curious. Do you think China has any role China, in the Middle East at all? China didn't uh, play any role in destroying Syria uh, they, because China is a friend of Syria. So so they they've been helping us. They've been sending us aid. They've been sending us like uh, you know things to help the the war and so on. But uh, like. But they they we so don't so have they're, they're they're helping to fight I guess America and Israel and Saudi Arabia and Turkey. Yeah, like, so they like they are helping like, Syria but not, not hands on but like giving like just giving aid and stuff. Yeah, just giving aid. Like we don't have any Chinese army or any of those stuff. So like they so they send packages like when the pandemic came on they were sending us you know like masks and bats and all of this stuff. No, they didn't send bats. Okay. I'm joking, but yeah. Do they send money or do they uh, or or just like helpful stuff that's like out, outside of war? Cuz like sometimes when America sends aid, we send weapons. You know, so I, the difference is like, <laughs> they've kind of used those words together. We're like, "Oh, we're sending like are we sending bombs or are we sending like band-aids?" You know, I don't it, so that word doesn't make yeah. sense in America anymore. You got to specify. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're not. They're they're sending like aids and stuff like uh stuff like uh for health or food or stuff like that. but they're not uh sending weapons and so on because like uh, and wait speaking of weapons one of the main reasons how we proved that America was funding ISIS and sending them weapons is that the Syrian army buys all its weapons from Russia most of the weapons that the Syrian army and government uses are made in Russia so when the Syrian army would enter a, an area that is under the control of ISIS and liberate it they would find weapons leftover weapons that are made in America so those were those were one of the beginnings of how we started finding out that america's behind you know the funding of these jihadists you know thank you obama uh yeah um i wanted to ask you cuz a lot of in america at least the majority i don't know by how much but the majority religious group is christians and that's definitely overwhelmingly the majority that sh- supports trump and they're very very pro israel extremely pro israel very anti iran What's your message to them with Syria? Cuz one thing I noticed that you just won't see on like a Ben Shapiro type conservative show is he's very Jewish, which is fine, but you know, he's very pro-Israel. Um and he's like anti-Syria. He talks about it a lot and he disagrees when Trump was getting along with them. But what I noticed was just researching online was that there were millions of Christian Syrians that seemed like a safe haven for Christians and then after the war it seemed like half of the Christian population was displaced or hopefully not killed. uh you know the the christian population went way down in syria so i think right wing media in america trump kind of changed that because before trump there wasn't really any other perspective and once he brought it the good and bad thing of trump i think is he's so likable everyone agrees with him so if he brings a bad idea and everyone loves it but he's brought a lot of good new anti war ideas which never would have made it into conservative politics without trump so we have to give him credit but uh you know they they never hear, they think they're going to these countries whether it be I don't think a lot of people in America know the difference between Syria, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan. So in their mind for decades it was like we're going to fight these jihadists. We have to go, but they don't realize in Syria that there were a lot of Christians and there still are. So can you what what's your I guess message to Christians in America who don't know the difference between like Syria and Iran? Mm. Well, first of all, Iran is an Islamic country. Syria is a secular country. You understand? Uh we have a lot of Christians in Syria. There is a town in Damascus countryside it's called Malula it is one of the oldest ancient christian towns in the world the people of Malula till today they still speak our our make which is the language of jesus christ a lot of people in the west don't know about don't know this that syria is a very is a country that is very rich in history and so on and the christian uh, population in syria are not oppressed the druze community are not oppressed the alawis all the minority groups are treated equally although syria the majority of syria is muslims but every single religion and minority group are not oppressed they are they have the same equal rights whatever they want they can work in politics and private business in you know in whatever they want they can dress as short skirts go to the beach wear bikinis and so on so a lot of people have this idea that syria is a you know a very conservative country like saudi arabia or or iran where all the women are covered and they don't have equal rights and so on so this is the truth about syria yeah Yeah, uh what do you about think the like do you do you think like say like 
Do you think Israel cares about the Christians in Syria? Because the Christians in America, we're taught, you know, they don't even say Christian anymore. They say Judeo-Christian. I mean, America and Israel are like tied at the hip. You, there's laws in mm -hmm. America that Trump and a lot of Republicans are passing, and they're passed through liberals sometimes too, where you can't criticize Israel in certain ways or protest or boycott them in America, which I've been outspoken against, not because I have a problem with uh, Jewish people or Israel, but in America, we're supposed to have the First Amendment to protest, to speak freely. And I noticed that slipping away. So uh, most right-wingers don't even question this, but I noticed like, you know, I don't, this is my take and let me know yours is I don't think Israel and Syria get along. And I think Israel has personal reasons that have nothing to do with Christians in America. And because we're joined at the hip, we're constantly doing things on behalf of them. But in pursuit of that, you know, it seems like uh, Christians are dying and getting displaced. So do you think, do you think they care about Christians as much as Christians in America think that they do? No, unfortunately they don't because look at the end of the day, see, for, by the way, Israel attacked us yesterday, attacked Damascus city yesterday night at 10 p.m. Uh, Israel striked us and they bombed many, many areas here in Damascus. Like I was hearing the sounds of explosion. But the thing is, uh, right now, especially in America, a lot of people uh, will tell you this. If, as soon as you criticize the Israeli government, they will immediately tell you, oh, you're being anti-Semitic, you're being anti-Semitic. It has nothing to do with Jewish people. Arabs are Semitic too, you understand? But when somebody, when somebody is criticizing the Israeli government, that doesn't mean he, he has a problem with Jews. It means he has a problem with the actions that the Israeli government is doing. Do you know that Israel in the past six months alone, they have bombed us more than 50 times, more than 50 times. And most of the time, the American mainstream media will not talk about it. But uh, and every time they strike us, whenever you ask them, why are you bombing Syria? They'll be like, oh, we're bombing Syria because there was Iranians in, in, in this area. There was Iranians in this area. If your problem really is with Iran, is why aren't you bombing Iran? Iran is very close to Syria. But see, they always use Iran as an excuse. Oh, we are bombing Iran, uh, this area in Syria because of Iran. Uh, by the way, Israel bombed Syria, I, I think it was back in 2014, a couple of years before Iran entered Syria. So what was their excuse back there in 2014 when they bombed us? You understand? So uh, it's, it's ridiculous. They always, uh, you know, and look, the main reason why the Syrian government and the Israeli government are not friends is only because uh, Israel occupied one of our lands. It's called the Golan Heights. And Israel is not uh, agreeing to give it back. And the Syrian government doesn't want to forget about it. You understand? This is the main reason. But like Syrian people and Israeli people, like there is no problem between us. The problem is between the governments. You understand? So, yeah, but yeah. it's very wrong. Yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, I, I know we're getting dragged into this stuff. And like it's now we're, we're pretty much like hand, we work hand in hand with them. What do you think Syria's ultimate goal is? And what do you think uh, Israel's ultimate goal is? And my question is, if neither party is willing to give up the Golan Heights, you know, um, well, I, it's a uh, four part question. I, I know you're smart, so you can handle it. Uh, it uh, what do you think Syria's ultimate goal is? What do you think Israel's ultimate goal is? What happens mm -hmm. if neither party gives up the Golan Heights? And do you think, you know, either country would be satisfied with just that? Like, would it be over if one party gave up the Golan Heights? Well, look, Syria's ultimate goal right now is to liberate Syria from all the jihadist groups so that we can finally rebuild our country, rebuild our economy, bring back our refugees, and, you know, grow. This is the Syria's ultimate goal currently. Israel's ultimate goal is for all the Middle Eastern countries to accept it by force. So uh, one of the main reasons why they are against Iran and, and Syria and, you know, Palestine is because these are countries that are, they look, at it, look at them as occupiers, you understand? So... Uh, there are there are people that say that Israel's ultimate goal is to you know the greater Israel, but I, they say they want to you know expand more and more because they believe that all of this land what is theirs, you know. So I don't think that will happen. That's not a realistic uh, thing. But uh, I think uh, Israel's ultimate goal right now is for people to you know accept it as a country. A long time ago, we would accept you as a country just back our land and they're not agreeing to give it back so this is one of the main reasons why they are still fighting yeah that's it do you think uh yeah which countries don't accept it the most because i know 
Trump and Kushner helped put together like a Abrahamic peace deal or whatever, and you, you have some of these powerful Arab countries kind of getting along with Israel, who are the countries that just don't accept them? Well, currently, the only countries that are not accepting them is Syria, Iran, uh, Iraq, and uh, Palestine. Like, these are the only people right now. Most of the Gulf countries now, they have, like, accepted them and so on. What, what do you see happening there? Do you think, look, what's more likely, look, them accepting you know me, Israel or Israel? You know me, I am a peaceful person, Anomaly, and I am against the idea of war, and I'm against the idea of force. I think the best solution for both countries, you know, because if you look at Israel, Israel is saying we will fight till death for Golan Heights. And Syria is saying we will fight till death for the Golan Heights. I think the best solution is for them to do an election for the people of the Golan Heights. And this, uh, the voting would be under the supervision of the international community, like America, Russia, Britain, whatever, you know. And let the people of the Golan Heights decide. If the people of Golan Heights said that we want to be part of Syria, then that is what should happen. And if they say, no, we want to be part of Israel, then that is what should be happen because war is never a solution and the blood will only bring more blood. And, you know, so I am against the idea of war. I am always uh, uh, with the diplomatic solution. So if these two are still fighting because of this land, do an election for the people of Golan Heights and whatever they vote, there should be the this is the most peaceful uh, solution instead because some people will be like no we're going to fight and take it by force the other people will say no we're going to take it by force this is not a solution because look unless you live in a war zone you would know how difficult and how you know uh tra tragic it is so uh this is my own opinion i want to read this comment real quick this guy said Ty Levy said, dude, I'm from the Golan Heights. You lost the Golan Heights in the war when you attacked us. What do you think about that comment? Say it again, sorry. He said, dude, you, 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 I'm from Golan Heights. You lost the Golan Heights uh, when you attacked us. I don't know if he's talking about you. you well, not, obviously not you specifically, but Syria. Did the Syria attack Golan Heights or is that what he's claiming? Or is he talking about well, the people? Well, the people of the Golan Heights are not Jews. They are Arabs and they're from the Druze community. So like everybody know, historically speaking, that the Golan Heights is for Syria, even legally speaking, in the international community, they say that this is an occupied land and this land belongs to the Syrian people. So I don't understand what he's saying. It's a fact. Not, yeah, I know? don't know who he's talking to. I just read it. So if it made sense to you, I was going to ask. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard, I've heard comments. I've heard uh, comments like that. Oh, it's the spoils of war, and it's the whatever. I understand, but it's a, it's a very, very um, ignorant kind of comment because at the end of the day, we have something called fact, and there's something called historical facts, and the international community all know for a fact that the Golan Heights is a land that belonged to Syria, and the people of there are Syrians, and many of them still hold the Syrian citizen ID card, and so on. So. Uh, so it seems yeah, like more than oil like obviously money always plays a part oil always plays a part but it seems like the big conflict there is you know and this has kind of dragged us i think into a lot of conflicts and been been tough for not just israel but america because we work with them or for them uh but it's like you know they want this land and a lot of their neighbors don't want the land and you know some people perceive it as they're taking back their ancient land and then others perceive it as they're taking their land. And then some people say, we're just trying to defend what we have. And then others say, you're not just defending what you have, you're defending what you have and taking, like, you're constantly expanding. So that seems to be the main driver of this conflict is like, you believe it's your land, they believe it's their land. They think they're defending their land. Other people think they're like expanding and taking more. Mm -hmm. Well, see, it's uh, land at the end of the day, it like, we're all, it doesn't, I don't understand. It's just so crazy, man. Politics, unfortunately, it, the only people that are going to get hurt by all of this is the people. The, the government, they keep on starting new wars and keep on, you know, feeding hate to their people and so on. But at the end of the day, it's the people that are losing. It's the people that are dying. It's the normal citizens like me and you that are, you know, uh, going through all of this shit. But uh, you see, the, the thing, uh, the American government, for an example, I personally think it's really time for them to pull out from the Middle East because, you know, they've been in the Middle East for more than 20 years and they haven't solved any problem. They've made the problems more worse. Like, look at Iraq. The American government has been in Iraq since 2003. And look at now, it's 2020. Iraq got destroyed. Their president died. They created a huge 
refugee crisis. And look at Iraq now. It's worse than King Jong-un's haircut. Same with Syria. <laughs> same with Syria. Same with Libya. Same with Afghanistan. It's like uh, the American presence in the Middle East has not solved any problem. It has just made the situation worse. And the American government is paying billions and billions and billions of dollars every single year on these military bases in the Middle East. So, and the problem is that America has a pandemic right now and you guys have problems and you guys have a lot of things that needs to be fixed in your country. Instead of you guys be paying billions of dollars in the Middle East, why don't you bring back the troops home, bring back all of, save all of this money and use it to, you know, rebuild the country, to help the homelessness crisis in California with the pandemic and so on. It's just crazy. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, our, our Congress definitely doesn't care about us. And I think our, uh, our media does a perfect job of like running people in circles and they, they send their money literally everywhere. I mean, we've sent so much money to Sudan, Israel, Mexico, South, South, South Pakistan. America. We got $600 and they sent billions of dollars to countries I, I'm pretty well research i haven't even heard of half the countries you sold the money to uh i heard the money to. i heard i heard they sent millions of dollars to pakistan for gender study yeah it's exactly it's it's embarrassing <laughs> it's pathetic i could have used that millions of dollars to buy a yacht you know i got i got that I but um i want to obama and trump if you can give them each a rating one to ten on how they how it was for you ten being the best one being the worst uh yeah I would say uh, Trump uh, seven and Obama three. Wait, I, sorry, it kind of skipped a little bit. Okay. That's I great. really dislike. I really look. Like, I really dislike Obama because Obama is a snake. You know, like you said earlier. I, you know, I, I'm against the idea of you know Trump stealing uh, uh, Syria's oil, but you know at least he came out and said it. I am in Syria to steal the oil. Like he was very. <laughs> clear you understand but obama he was like no we are there to for a humanitarian crisis and to help the children and so on and he was a fucking liar you understand so no i would rather have you know someone that will tell me face to face what his intentions are instead of lying and putting a mask and acting like he really cares about the syrian people and the problem is unfortunately that joe biden is obama number two so i will the syrian people right now are very worried that Syria is going to get destroyed again because now he's in power. And like you saw, he's all the, the motherfucker has only been in, in power for one month and he has already bombed Syria, you know? And the, the, the mainstream media is not really like attacking him. You know, it, when, when Trump strikes Syria, the mainstream media was attacking him more than now they're, they're attacking Joe Biden. So uh, it's just so crazy that uh, the, the, the American people, they, they would have to live with this mainstream media that is always lying to you guys and not telling you the full story. And, you know, it's like they don't care. They, they, the military industrial complex, it's so, it's so powerful to the point that it's like no matter who the American president is, like the foreign policy never really, really, really changed. I'm going to, people are asking in the comments, is this going to be saved? I'm probably going to save it for a few hours and I'm going to put it on BitChute. And then I'm, in my story, I'm going to post the link and it's going to stay there forever. So I'm going to post it and it'll be up there. Yeah. I'll, I'll send you the link too. Um, yeah. Will I, you be posting it on Facebook? Yeah, I'm, I, they're getting crazy with certain stuff. So I'll probably, I don't know if I'll upload it on Facebook or YouTube. Um, even okay. here, I'll probably leave it up for a day. But on, on Instagram, if you look at my feed, I don't, I don't save any of the live streams. I usually just delete them and I only do like the box videos, but I'm going to put it up so I can download it and save it for a while. And then I'll try to figure out where to put it. I'm definitely going to keep it somewhere permanently. Um, so people yeah. can see it. Um, mm -hmm. I was talking to this guy from Syria just at an event like months ago. And I, I mentioned your name because he said he was from Syria. His family was there. And I said, you know, this comedian from Syria, Treka. And he said, yeah. And he told me, is this true or not? He said that your uncle is like a legendary Syrian. He was like, yeah, I know. I know Treka. But he said his uncle was like some like Syrian warrior or something. Is that true? Yeah, he was. Uh, he fought against ISIS and so on. Yeah. That yeah, yeah, that's what he was saying. He was like, he took, yeah. I don't know. I have a lot of, I have a lot of friends and uh, cousins and, you know, uh, that are, you know, because it's the Syrian army. So you have friends, cousins, family members that are in the Syrian army that are putting their life every day in danger to protect the Syrian people from ISIS and Al-Qaeda. You know, uh, it's crazy. You know, I was fortunate enough to not enter the army because I lived abroad a couple of years. So I was able to pay 
a fees that wouldn't let me serve in the army. But uh, that, that, didn't, that didn't make me stop. So I started fighting for my own country in my own way, through social media, through spreading the news, through, you know, informing the public about what is really going on in Syria. Because, you know, holding a weapon and fighting is not enough these days. You need people that are holding a weapon and protecting the land, and you, you need people that will be spreading the truth and spreading awareness about what is really going on in the country. Because, you know, before my videos, there were many, many Americans that didn't know what was going on. You know, I was saying, and you remember this because we know each other for a very long time. I was saying that Obama was funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda before people knew that. People were saying those days, oh my God, this guy is is uh, doing a conspiracy theory and what kind of bullshit is that? How is Obama funding ISIS and Al-Qaeda? So from the beginning, we were trying our best to inform the public, especially the American people and the people that are, that their governments are playing a huge role in this war. So thankfully, see, by time and time, the truth is revealing itself and these snakes are getting ex exposed, whether it's Hillary Clinton, whether it's Obama, whether it's Joe Biden and so on. Yeah, I know I found your videos years ago. I don't remember the first one. I just remember it being super funny and, and super like reasonable. It's like common sense mixed with your hilarious. And uh, yeah. I think it was around the time that Tulsi Gabbard, and this is why a lot of people don't know why I really like Tulsi Gabbard. I, I understand she has some left-wing policies and some questionable ideas and stuff, but she really opened my eyes when she went on CNN and, and explained I was in, you know, she took a trip to Syria and she was really, I think it was her and Rand Paul passed a Stop Arming Terrorists Act. And the goal was to stop arming terrorists because our money indirectly or directly, you know, they, they keep it open, but it's like, whether they meant to or not, we're not sure. But what we do know is our money are, I mean, you could Google like ISIS trucks, they're driving around United States trucks. So either we're giving them to these groups who are then getting conquered by ISIS, or we're just sloppy with what, what we're doing or purposeful, you know, we don't here, uh, it's not very clear, but she's like, I went over to Syria and everybody I talked to said, I don't know who these rebel groups are. I know who Al Qaeda, Al Nusra and ISIS is, and I know who our government is. So when you guys are funding all these groups, they're attacking us and they're attacking our people. So, you know, she kind of exposed that to me that I've never seen. And then I started seeing your videos around the same time. So I was like, wow, this guy's from Syria and he's super funny. And then they, t they were taken off on, on Facebook. Um, yeah. I want to ask. Tulsi Gabbard is a truth teller because uh, look, uh, even in the last election, I, I felt that she was the most reasonable candidate among all the Democratic Party. Because look, she, 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 she ticked all the qualifications, but because she was anti-war, the Democratic Party didn't give her a chance. You know, she was in the military, she was in the army, so she knows exactly what she's talking about and she knows the, about the consequences of war. And she was anti-war and against uh, military intervention and so on. And she was a woman and a woman of color and a Democrat and so on. But because she is anti-war, they didn't give her a chance at all. You know, and if she was saying, oh, yes, we need to send more bombs to Syria, they would have maybe, you know, uh, elected her. But, uh, you know, they elected Joe Biden and uh, Kamala Harris, which is really, really disappointing. And that's what a lot of people don't realize because I feel like it's very black and white where like either people are hot or cold. They love you or they hate you and they don't kind of speculate on like with Trump. I like a lot of what he did. A lot of what he said he's by far the realest thing we've ever seen here. But I, there's certain things that I'm like, wait, I don't know about that. And then people get mad or with Tulsi. I say, I like that and that and not that. And people say, well, I, I, either they throw her out completely or they love her. So I try to explain to people the real reason they hate Tulsi Gabbard is because of her stance in the Syrian war and because of her anti-regime change stance. They're making her look like the villain on SNL, despite her being the most reasonable. It's not because she believes in universal health care. It's not because she supported Bernie Sanders. It's because of her stance on the regime change war. She's went right on these, uh, these platforms and told them to their face where their money was going into the hands of terrorist organizations. And she tried to pass a bill with Rand Paul called the Stop Arming Terrorist Act. That's why they hated her. And a lot of people don't realize, when did the media like Trump? I think only twice or three times when he struck Syria. That was like, you had uh, MSNBC and all these like left-wing news being like, wow, you know, I, I can't- Trump is exactly presidential. Trump. He's being so presidential. It's like, you don't agree with anything he does except for bombing Syria. So there's a real um, influence in the press. Obviously there's policies and stuff they want, but they're and, huge and, obsession. And by the way, this foreign war. by the way, by the way, let me tell your followers something very important and they can go back on YouTube and, and they can see everything that I am telling them. The first time Donald Trump came out and said he's going to pull all the troops 
from Syria. Do you know what happened? The politicians and mainstream media came out and they started uh, criticizing him. And then Trump came out and said, no, we are going to pull out all the troops from the Middle East. We don't give a fuck anymore. What happened after four days exactly? You can check it out. The dates are after four days exactly. They staged a chemical attack in Damascus countryside uh, in an area called Douma. They did that to force the American troops to stay in Syria because Trump was going to uh, pull out the troops a couple of days after. So they, so they staged a chemical in Damascus countryside in an area called Douma. When they did that, then the mainstream media and the politicians started you know, like cornering Trump and telling them, how can you pull out the troops when children are dying? And look at what Assad did, the chemical weapons and all of this stuff. And, and a day after that, America, France and UK striked Damascus. So can, can, when you look at all the, the events that happened, it's very clear that they staged this because ISIS and Al-Qaeda that were in Damascus countryside, they were, they, they were paranoid. They were like, oh my God, America's leaving us. America's going to leave us. We, we, we felt powerful because America was by our side. So now Trump is saying that he's going to leave us. If, if the American troops uh, pull out, then the Syrian army would come and liberate the area in a couple of weeks. So they were like, we have to do something. So the mainstream media backed them up. They staged a chemical attack in Douma. They filmed it. They put a couple of pictures of children crying so that they can, you know, manipulate the, the emotions of the American people. And that's how they forced the American troops to stay in Syria. Did you see any, any news? Sorry, you're cutting off a little. Did you see any yeah. news in America report what you said? Because I know a lot of people were skeptical of the chemical attacks. I think like Rand Paul, like, I, I don't know exactly who I can't remember at the time. But uh, did, did you see any American media report what you said or no? I mean, look, let, let, let's, let us use our common sense, you know, because I know the mainstream media doesn't use their common sense, okay? So think about it. Trump said he's going to pull out the troops from Syria this week. So the, the Syrian government will be like, oh my God, uh, America's finally leaving. You know what is the best idea for us to do? Let us hit Damascus countryside with chemical weapons. I mean, think of it, is it logical? For the, yeah, the no, Syrian government to do it. What we were, that's what everybody was saying. Like a lot of the exactly. But well, like, think listen, about it. Yeah, if, if Syria is really attacking people, of course we want to save them. But when America's about to leave, even if they did want to hurt their people, they would probably wait a few months. You know, where it's like, why would they do it right when America was leaving? The because next they day, wanted America to stay and fight them. We all figured that. Out. Who did you see that said that and reported that? I'm just curious. Like, do you guys keep an eye on American media at all, or? Yeah, of course, everyone, CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, ABC, all of them came out and said that the Syrian government used chemical weapons in Damascus countryside. All of them. Did anybody like online or even like Tucker? I, I'm not, I don't remember at the time, but like did anybody. Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson came out and said the opposite. He was like, so is it logical that the Syrian government would use chemical weapons on its people? the next day after Trump said he's going to pull out troops. It just doesn't make sense. It's a blatant lie. But the problem is that the, they, they, know, they, they know how a lot, unfortunately, a lot of American citizens, they really follow the mainstream media and they believe whatever they say, you understand? Unfortunately. But now people are waking up, especially, you know, after Trump uh, became president, a lot of people started losing trust with the mainstream media. You know, he was the one that made the phrase, uh, fake news uh, popular, you know, people started because people started noticing, oh my God, these people are actually lying to us. They're actually lying for more wars and for us to send our children to fight in wars that have nothing to do with America and that have nothing to do with American, America's national security. Like what, how is Syria a threat to America? Why is America in the Middle East? It doesn't make sense. You understand? But this is how they are lying to the people, unfortunately. So, so Tucker countered the narrative. Was he the only one mm -hmm. in like mainstream media that you saw do it? I remember that. Yes, I remember that. And I know a lot of people online, like a lot of the, you know, Trumpers, libertarians, I think, and even like honest, progressive, like Tulsi types, I think were pretty on it. But as far as TV, he seems to be the only one that will counter some of this stuff. I want to ask you before before I take off about the pandemic, because how is it affecting Syria? You know, are you guys in lockdown? And what do you think about the whole thing? Well, we are not on lockdown. All the places are open, the restaurants, the bars, the cafes. 
Some people wear masks, some people don't wear masks, but it's not really mandatory because, you know, like in Syria, we're facing bigger problems than a flu, you understand? We have bigger things to worry about than a flu. But uh, of course, the pandemic made the situation way more worse, especially that we have economic sanctions and these economic sanctions that are imposed on the Syrian people has destroyed the economy. Uh, we are no longer allowed to import or export. All the embassies are closed. You can't make money online. A Syrian isn't allowed to have a MasterCard or a PayPal. We started having a fuel crisis, electricity crisis. Like right now, there are areas in Syria that you only have electricity for nine or 10 hours a day. You know, a bread crisis, water crisis. The situation is very, very bad. And the pandemic made it worse, especially with the economic sanctions, the Caesar sanctions that America is implementing and that NATO countries are also implementing on Syria. So a lot of Syrian people currently are suffering. They're trying to find a way out because of the pandemic and economic sanctions and war. Like imagine, think of it, bro. You know, you have Americans right now that uh, because they've been on lockdown for six months, they are crying on social media. I can't take this shit anymore, you know, lockdown. So imagine a Syrian that is living in Syria for 10 years in a war zone. You know, where bombs are falling daily, ISIS, Al-Qaeda, suicide bombing, America striking, Israel striking. You have more than 70 armies fighting in your country. So uh, I think it's, it's time that the, you know, American people stand up and speak out. You know, a lot of people are speaking out currently, especially after Biden striked us this week. I've seen a lot of Americans that are sending me messages and they're speaking out online. They're telling me we don't support the, the bombing of Syria. We don't support military inventions. We want our troops to go back home. Uh, we want to stop these endless uh, wars in the Middle East, but they have to make their voices heard by the American government. It was huge on Twitter. I don't know if it was trending, but like my feed was liberals and conservatives dunking on Biden because of the Syria. Like the big meme was like, hey, can we have a $2,000 check? And he's like, no, but you can't have a Syrian war. And like, you know, it was going viral. So I think it's... Uh, yeah. The good thing about Biden is, well, you know, definitely not his foreign policy, but I was hoping, not with all this capital stuff and, and, and uh, you know, dividing left and right, but I was hoping everybody from progressive left to, to right wing would finally be like, okay, we all agree that we don't like that. You know, I was hoping the unity would be like, we all don't want that. Um, and it, it happens at certain points, and then I feel like the media turns people against each other again. Um, so I thought that would be the one positive point, would be like, yeah. maybe we can have even a bigger opposition to what's going on. Uh, what do you think about the official narrative of it? Because what we're told here uh, on both medias, I mean, I guess, t once again, Tucker does has some people on that says the opposite sometimes, but we're told it came from a wet market in China, uh, from a bat or a pangolin. I'm not really sure. I, like the South Park episode, uh, they're, they're not sure. And, uh, you know, it just happened to go and that now the whole world needs to lock down and you know, New Zealand, and they get a new case, they lock down for a week. What do you, do you believe the official narrative? And do you think there's any ulterior motives? Or do you think a, a, a virus just like slipped out and this is the right way to handle it? Well, to be honest, I honestly don't know how it all started, whether it came from a bat or if it was man-made or something. Because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm just a Syrian living in Syria. But uh, uh, I, I, I feel that it's not that dangerous as the mainstream media is making it to be. Like, okay, we need to take care, especially if you know you're old in age or you have heart problems or stuff like that, you need to be careful. But the way they are treating it is like, oh my God, it's cancer and we're all going to die and so on. So I think that the mainstream media is overreacting so much, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't try to be careful at the same time, you know, to be on the safe side. Yeah, now I hear because here, I mean, uh, we have 50 states that are like the size of countries, so it's handled differently. But I would say unanimously, you know, things shut down for a while. Some things are open, but a lot of masks, a lot of mask mandates, a lot of uh, like it, it feels like, you know, it's been dragged on for a year. They said 15 days to slow the spread. So oh from my, my perspective, obviously, I, I think it's great talking to you, too, because this has been really crazy for America. But when you put it in perspective of what it could be, I try to think of even like delivery food and stuff. Like I'm, I'm way more blessed than my ancestors who had to hunt for food. But in your situation, you know, you've dealt with economic sanctions and war. Um, for us, it just seems like 
they, they keep selling us on this idea that like any month now, and then they just kind of turned around and like people like Bill Gates and stuff are like, ah, maybe like 2022. So we're starting to feel like, at least in my camp, that it's some sort of bamboozle because we're equivalent to economic sanctions in our country, except more sneakily. So it's like economic death to all small businesses and restaurants and record yeah. sales for Amazon. So, you know, I, I just have a hard time thinking it's coincidental. I'm not saying the virus is not real. I'm just saying their exploitation of it, similar to how you were saying, in order to do something, they need a reason. And uh, I've tried to make a lot of videos on that where, you know, false flags are not a theory. They, they're documented in history. If you Google, you know, I think it's like CBS, uh, JFK files, the first thing that comes up is like, they were planning on blowing up a boatload of Cubans just to go after Castro. And they said real or simulated. So they're sick enough to either fake it completely as if it never happened or actually literally blow up a boatload of Cubans where Castro, I'm sure he wasn't a great guy, but it's like, if he's so bad, then why do you have to do that? Can't you just, you know, it's like something, yeah. something's odd there. So I think, uh, you know, in order to accomplish a goal, there's always something that they need, whether it be a chemical attack or a, a virus. So it's starting to feel really fishy over here. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, my friend. You're right. Any last words? And uh, I'm going to I'm going to keep this up for a few hours and I'm going to put it on BitChute and Rumble because even my Facebook page now, uh, I got demonetized for a couple uh, months, but now they keep going back and forth between like really cutting my reach and really not. So it's uh, obviously I'm going to post this and I think it's going to do big numbers on BitChute and Rumble. But with certain things, I see the games, even with like COVID, they have these little things where like they scan the video and then if you say one, I, I haven't even said what they like, they'll be like, oh, this isn't that. And I, you, the fact checkers, I'm sure you've dealt with this. So it's like, I'm trying yeah. to be extra careful because my Insta is right now pretty much 100% open and it's doing numbers where Facebook, they keep cutting back. Bitshoot and Rumble's mm -hmm. uncensored. So I, you know, I'm just going to post the whole thing yeah. on there. I'm going to leave it up for five hours, but I'll send you the Bitshoot and the Rumble link. And then I'll, I'll post it in my story. And hopefully we can blow it up on there because um. I, I think great. this is a powerful interview and I think it's big enough to do numbers. I've seen certain videos get hundreds of thousands of views on there that are like, you know, got censored on other social media. So I'd rather not have to worry about cutting any parts out and just give the whole raw thing. So put yeah. it, I'll put it on there. Yeah. Any last words? Well, nothing. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasant conversation. I really uh, support and admire your work. Thank you for always speaking the truth. Uh, you are like a role model. And uh, to all the people that are watching, if you're interested to see more of my stuff, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter, all under the name Treka Z. So if you want to see more of my work, just follow me at Treka Z. And uh, to stay updated, of course, with the situation in Syria. And uh, yeah, thank gonna, you again. I'm going to keep this up probably for like, I'll probably keep it up till like 9 o'clock today on Instagram to let like tens of thousands of people see it. And I'm going to put the yeah. top comment to say, uh, you know, look, go to my BitChute or Rumble page to see this in the future. What you should do is when it posts is comment and I'll pin your comment to the top as well. So then everybody can follow you. So at least most of the views come in the first six, seven hours anyway. So, you know, everybody who saw this interview, if you can't follow them here, 20 times as many people are going to see it over the next few hours. And I want everybody to follow you. Same with Facebook. Yeah. I know, uh, you know, how do you remember how many views total you got on Facebook? Maybe like 10 million plus, right? At least. Yeah. And yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for helping me out because, uh, you know, getting my, the word out, you, you really helped me by sharing my videos on your page, the World Cloud page and Anomaly page. So uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, always know that you have a brother here in Syria that got your back for life. I appreciate you. And uh, we look like literal brothers, but I'm not serious. I'm exactly. Italian, Puerto Rican, Polish. But people people accuse me of like role playing, dressing up to be you to like say things where I'm like, I'm. Even now, I'm like, we do look really similar. We're not literally yeah. brothers, but it is some I, sort of like universal. Especially when I had the long hair, especially when I had the long hair, a lot of people would be like, oh my God, Anomaly is the best. I'll be like, no, this is, this is me talking, not Anomaly. Some people, <laughs> even in my page, they would think that it's Anomaly. Someone wrote, why is Anomaly using this Middle Eastern accent? And it's always funny. <laughs> I guess one more question is, uh, do, you, do you do comedy shows out there? Would you ever go like in a... In a yeah, now the I do comedy. Now the pandemic screwed it up, but would you ever go on a tour? Yeah, I do comedy shows all the time. Like I've done it in bars and nightclubs and 
in Arabic, and I've also done in English, like to people that can speak English here. And I'm planning, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stay here in Syria forever. You know, I'm planning to travel, you know, outside and start doing my comedy work and so on. And maybe you might not know, in the future, if I ever make it to America, you know, maybe me and you, we can do like a podcast together or, oh, you know, like, yeah. a, it if will be amazing. I, can you, yeah, and of course. would you want to get a citizenship somewhere else if you could, or I, I don't know how it really works. Well, you see, my brother, the problem is, you know, I've been waiting for the war in Syria to, to end for the past 10 years. And unfortunately, look, the situation is only getting worse every year. So uh, in order for me to survive and, uh, you know, uh, build my future and so on, the only realistic solution is for me to leave my country because, you know, because of the war and economic sanctions, my future and the future of the Syrian people is dead. So I have to go out. Thankfully, I have a lot of followers from America and Europe and many English speaking countries. So wherever I make it out, I'm going to, of course, continue doing my videos, my comedy videos. But I would then also start doing comedy tours, stand up comedy shows. I also rap and do music. So you might not know, maybe me and you, we can do a tour together. Like you can rap. I can maybe do some stand up comedy as an opening for your act. Uh, we can write a song, do a podcast like the future, the future. Uh, I'm sure the future is holding a lot of good stuff for me, both me and you. So only yeah. time will tell. We got two, prob two big problems to get over. First, uh, world peace and then, uh, or at least uh, Middle East peace. And then also the pandemic threw a whole nother yeah. wrench. And uh, yeah, it's hard to even do shows in America right now. I mean, uh, South Dakota, there's a few states. But uh, yeah, I, I, I pray that in two years, it all looks different. Because I'm seeing things the same way where it's like, you know, I, I hope for it to get better, but I'm like, all right, well, 15 days to slow the spread has gone a year, but mm -hmm. let's put out some yeah. good energy by 2023 world tour. I'm just throwing it out there. If it, if it picks up, that's fine. If not, it's all good. But uh, thanks for joining me, uh, Treka. Make sure you comment when, I, when this video uploads. And then like everybody who watches it, it's going to be on bitshoot.com slash dream rare and then rumble.com slash dream rare. Those are my two pages. And I'm going to keep it up in full uh, context so I don't have to deal with it because i know just off certain things like how the uh social media uh like you know uh, communists are acting i'm sure you've been fact checked on stuff but i i'm always just super careful with certain stuff um but i want to put it up in full so it'll be up for eight hours then bitch you rumble and i'm going to put it in my story so everybody mm -hmm. on instagram can get that link thank you so much my brother for having me of course good timing we didn't even plan it worked out all right talk yeah. to you soon see you guys take care peace Bye.